Hey everybody, this is Jason Akers with Green Acres Pest Control here live in Florida on vacation and still doing my live streams for everybody. I'm on early tonight. It is 7.30. Normally I'm not here for two more hours, but I thought I would try to get on early because I'm on vacation. Normally I've worked all day long and today I haven't really worked. So I thought I would get on here early. I'm on my iPad again, just like last week I was in Georgia. So I'm on my iPad tonight. And so it's kind of hard to, uh, you know, to really see a whole lot what's going on with chat and everything like that too. I'm going to try to pull up my live stream on my cell phone. Hey, Jennifer, try to pull up. Let's see which one of these got the best charge. This one. That way I can try to communicate a little bit. I'm outside today. I'm outside on my iPad. I got a ring light hooked up. It's dark because it's outside. And uh, I'm going to try pull up my YouTube on my phone, my channel, Let's see here, so I can read my chat better because it'll make it easier for me to be able to read my chat. Let's see, how do I go to my channel? Home. There I am, live in Cape Coral, Florida. That's where I'm at tonight. We're doing good. Nancy asked how the family, in fact, my wife is sitting right here. I can touch her right here. She's right here. But she don't like to be on camera. She's camera shy, right? Well, I'm just in my jammies anyway. She's in her jammies. She don't want you to see her jam in her jammies. If I play some good music, she'll be jamming in her jammies. Um, but everybody's doing all right for those that are wondering. Uh, let's see. Hope everybody's doing okay Thursday night. Live streaming on vacation. That actually doesn't look too bad. See? I can see myself right there. See, that's not too bad. Mm -hmm. Yes. My wife has a ring light, and so she said I should bring her ring light out here and hook it up and so that I could do my live stream outside because it is nice in Florida. Somebody says they don't know how to connect on Discord. Let me see. Let me pull up my other phone and do pull up Discord. Let me see. Discord... I think I've got you on Discord, Yvonne. I think I do. Pretty sure I do. Um, I thought I did. I don't have any ability to answer phone calls tonight. So, a lot of times on my live streams, I'll have a phone number, like right down here somewhere or over here somewhere, where people can call me and talk to me and ask me questions, but I don't have a phone. Uh, I do that on my computer. And I'm on an iPad, and I don't know how to do that. I'm not, I, that's way above my pay grade. I have no idea how to do it. Let me see. Where is she? I thought she was on here. Maybe you didn't join after all. What would you like to ask, Yvonne? You can ask me here. I'll answer your question. I respond right away. I've been talking to people all week on Discord because I've been online. So I'm on my phone. It's a Pokeball. I'm on my phone. And so I've been talking to people all week. I talked to a guy down here in Florida just the other day. He's in Miami. What pests can survive sub-freezing temperatures in a vacant property? Um, fleas, spiders, ants. Bed bugs, cockroaches, lots of bugs, mice and stuff. Lots of bugs can survive in freezing temperatures in a home. Um, you know, a lot of bugs will die in, like cockroaches, for example, will die in freezing temperatures, but their eggs won't. And so the eggs will survive, which is one of the first things that happens when you turn the heat on, the roach eggs will hatch out and you'll have roaches. So... But yeah, lots of things can live in freezing temperatures. You know, a lot of people believe that bugs all die in the cold, that the winter kills off bugs, and it's actually not true because uh, bugs, I mean, if that was true, then you wouldn't have bugs in the north at all. You, I mean, New York, you know, different places uh, up near the Arctic Circle, they get bugs. They wouldn't have them at all. So egg cycles usually will survive even the coldest winter they'll live through it. 
let's see, I plan to pre-treat. What do you recommend as a cover all? I usually, you, you can sneeze if you need to sneeze. If you need to sneeze, you sneeze. They, they don't, it don't matter. If they hear it, it's okay. I'll just say gazuntai or something. But um, anyway, with, uh, with uh, I usually use Alpine. That's what I recommend people use. If it's specifically a bed bug problem though, I usually recommend just doing a pre-treat with Crossfire, treating the whole house around all the baseboards, closets, and everything. Because if you're, unless you're building your own house and you know there weren't bed bugs in it prior to moving in, you know that nobody had them in there before, or you're moving into a brand new apartment that was just built, um, you don't know if the place has bed bugs or not, and you're going on the word of someone else. And so I usually always recommend that people go through with a preventative bed bug treatment if you're moving from one location to another because you don't know the reason the people moved out, you don't know why they sold their house, you don't know why they moved out of the apartment, you don't know, and it could have very well been bed bugs. I've known of people that have sold their house because of bed bugs and they just got out of it. So it's expensive to kill bed bugs. The exterminator came today to treat my bed bugs. I'm not 100% confident they're gone. Well, they probably aren't gone. If they just treat it today, more than likely the bed bugs are not gone. Um, any, any and all pesticides that you use for bed bug control are not going to eliminate the bed bugs in just one day. Um, you've got egg cycles. You've got, uh, there's lots of things that, that you have to take into account for bed bugs. So not every bed bug feeds every day. And just because they go in and pull everything apart, pull your bed apart, treat your, which they should have done, you know, treating your furniture. I mean, that's what I do. Um, you know, tomorrow you'll still have bed bugs. In fact, you'll still have bed bugs for a couple of weeks because not every stage of bed bug is going to come out right away. It takes them time. And so with, uh, with uh, well, I mean, eggs themselves take six to ten days to hatch. They're not going to die. If they're not exposed to the pesticide or anything, they're not going to die. And so if they're in the wall or if they're up inside a bed frame or something, you just can't get to it. You're really just waiting for those bugs to hatch so then the bug itself can crawl through the residual pesticide and die. But they're not going to die until they get into the residual pesticide. I called you months ago from Pennsylvania. Uh, you gave me advice about bed bugs. I use Crossfire with Harbor Freight Sprayer. I'm still free of the spawn of Satan. Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome, Jason. So you got a good name, Jason. That's a good name. I like that name. That's a good name. Jason Christopher. Jason. That's a good name. I like that name. But yeah, a lot of people will... I've had people comment on my videos about Crossfire and different things that I use. And I mean, I don't work for MGK. I, I, I just use it and it works. If people ask me, what, what do you suggest we use for bed bugs? And I say, well, this is what I use. I use Crossfire. This is a track record I have using Crossfire. This is why I use Crossfire. But there's lots of pesticides on the market you can buy that have bed bugs on the label that you can use, you know, that may or may not work. Um, a lot of pesticides still have bed bugs on the label, even though the bed bugs have developed a resistance to the pesticide. So, you know, but I do have people that will comment and they'll say that, I used Crossfire and I'm still getting bit. Uh, I used it four or five days ago and I'm still getting bit. I used it three weeks ago and I'm still getting bit. And the thing is that you got to understand is because Crossfire is a non-repellent pesticide, the bed bugs do not see the chemical. All right, there's several pesticides that are non-repellent. Crossfire, Apprehend, Temperid, uh, Alpine WSG, all four of those pesticides are non-repellent pesticides. So the bed bugs are not going to see the chemical. So they're going to still crawl out to bite you. And they will make it based on the, the strength of the chemical and how long it's been since it was applied. You know, the longer it's been since it was applied, the weaker it is. It's still killing the bugs, but it's taking the bug longer to die. So typically, if it takes six to ten days for a bed bug egg to hatch, six to 10 days for a bed bug to bite you after it's hatched. That's up to 20 to 21 days maximum, you know, three weeks from the time that you spray until that, until that bed bug comes out and bites you. And it's got to get in the chemical. But Crossfire has a 30 day residual. That's why I recommend Crossfire. Apprehend has a 90 day residual. So Apprehend will actually last longer. The reason I don't recommend Apprehend on my channel is because 
it requires specialized equipment. It requires specialized treatment. It is a mold spore. And I just don't trust that people are going to be able to do it and be effective. But Crossfire is just a liquid pesticide. You spray it and it kills them. So Jason says, today is my birthday and being free of these nasty critters are the best gift in the world. I got blisters. It's so horribly bad. Thank you again so much. Listen to this man. <laughs> he knows his craft. It's because my name is Jason. Uh, PSA, it is time to hit the like button from Jennifer. Yes, I agree with that. I agree with that. All right, so let me see here. Now I'm going to have to start reading from my phone because stuff's scrolling too fast. Okay, so I have been battling with pest control for six months, and they can't get rid of it completely. Can I treat with Crossfire at the same time they are treating in between 14-day service? They give. Okay, so the problem, the problem with using another pesticide when another chemical is using a different pesticide, all right, they're using... Uh, See, I can't search these chemicals because I just, I am really crippled here with my ability to use it. So, see, normally, this, is, this would be my, my, my screen right here. So this is the screen I'm talking to you on. I can see myself. It's visual. I can see myself. All right. That's the screen that I usually screencast from. And then I'll have a screen over here that I use to look up stuff. And then I have a screen up there that I use to look up more stuff or I use to answer Skype calls or whatever. And so it's very difficult for me to just be able to search a chemical on demand. Um, but if he's using demand, if demand is the name brand of the chemical, that's the demand is. Uh, no, demand is not. I'm thinking Delta Methrin. That's not Delta Methrin. That's. Uh, I can't remember the name brand of Delta Methrin. But um, you could probably use Crossfire on top of that chemical. In fact. Let me see. Let me keep that up because I need that up. Let me look up this. I got to search this. I'm going to do the best I can. L-A-M-B-D-A. And see, I'm blocking my light. See, my light's right there. See? Shadow. Ooh, spooky. Uh, C. Y. Oops. Y. H. A. L. Uh, oh, there we go. Um, onslaught. Oh, you use Onslaught. Okay. That's easier. I don't use Onslaught. I'm not, but Demand CS is not. But, uh, Onslaught's supposed to kill bed bugs. I had a lot of people tell me it works really good for bed bugs. I've never used it. I've considered using it. Uh, Onslaught is a micro encapsulated, which is really good for pesticide uh, strength, uh, makes it last longer. Um, what are the actives? But the clothidin thing, or however it's pronounced, that's in, uh, that's not it. That is not the active ingredient. But if it's the active ingredient in Demand CS, then I would probably not. Um, let me look up. Let me look up one more thing. Hold on. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. Let me see here. Crossfire. This is easier to do this. Because I know they got, it's a C word on that one too. Crossfire label. I thought that was the active ingredient though. Yeah. Um, no, it's not. No, it's not. So I don't know how they would react. To, to be the honest, to be honest with you, I don't know how they would react. Maybe somebody in the chat that has used the two together maybe would know better than me, but I don't know how Demand CS would would stack up to um, using with, with with in conjunction with Crossfire. I probably would would side against it because Demand. All right, so I used Demand before. Hey, John, I've used Demand before once um, a long time ago. It was it was probably twenty years ago back when they first outlawed Durzban and Diazanon. I used demand. Okay, we switched to it and we used it for like a month. And it was such garbage, such awful pesticide. I mean, when you're comparing it to something like Dizanon and Durazban, those chemicals were very effective at, at insect control and demand just was not. And so uh, I didn't even use half a bottle of concentrate. I used it for one month. And I think my dad probably still has that old bottle sitting around somewhere. But 
That was a long, long time ago, years ago, because Durazban and Diazanon were phased out in the early 2000s, like between 2004 and 2007. And so it's been a really long time since I've used it. And I would imagine that it is a repellent. The non-repellents weren't really big and popular back then. The only non-repellents that were really popular were things like, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, Fipronil, which is the active in Termidor. And that was really mostly for termite treatments. Um, diazinon is a non-repellent for ants, but that's about the only thing it doesn't repel as ants. It worked really, really well for ants. So, uh, but I just found that demand just was crap. I hated it. I don't like it. Even to this day, I don't use it. I use, um, the, the chemicals that I use that I have for my business are, uh, I use Crossfire, of course, Alpine, WSG, Alpine Dust. I love Alpine Dust. It's really good for things like Yellow Jackets. Um, I use, I use Alpine Dust for carpenter ants in the wall voids and stuff, places that it's really effective. Um, I use, uh, Niban granules, uh, the bait for ants and things. I use, and roaches and stuff too, they're good for that. Um, I use boric acid, uh, I use, and also Alpine Dust actually has diatomaceous earth in it. So even if the pesticide itself runs out, it still has DE, like in the nest of yellow jackets, it's really effective, um, which is why I use it. But I also have, um, let's see, Demon Max, uh, Tau Star, oh man, and several, several other pesticides. Um, perimeter, the reason you would do a perimeter treatment, are you talking about in the bedrooms or around the outside of your home? Demand can be used inside and outside. Let me text my son. I forgot my water. I'm on vacation, by the way. I'm on vacation, and I still come on here, and I still talk to you guys, because I really like to do this. It's really fun for me. Um, but the way that you kill bed bugs in the interior of a home is you treat the perimeter walls around the baseboard of every room. You, I don't like demand. Um, you treat the crown molding if there's problems with bed bugs. I don't always treat the crown molding unless I find bed bugs living on the crown molding. But I treat the baseboards throughout the entire room I treat around the window frames, door frames. I treat the I treat the sofas, love seats, lazy boy recliners. Um, yeah. So when I do general pest control, I treat uh, interior baseboards around the windows and doors. I treat around the exterior of the house, around the windows and doors, around the base of the house, the eaves, overhangs, soffits. Uh, gutters, places like that, because carpenter ants like to get up around the gutters, especially if people don't don't clean them out like they're supposed to, and they're growing little trees in them and stuff. You always treat around the gutters because they'll they'll harbor carpenter ants. Um, and where the gutter, when when I say around under the gutter, I mean where the gutter is actually nailed to the wall, that little crack that forms between the gutter and the soffit, that little spot there. I like to use a jet stream and get in there, and that'll help a lot with ants. Where deck boards and stuff go up against the wall, I like to treat between those and stuff. I have nothing but a bed, and everything I own is in plastic bins. There's just a few straggler bus bugs left. You may be getting rid of them. You know, that's the thing. You may not need to use Crossfire at all. If the bed bugs are almost dead, then you may not need to use Crossfire. You want to say hello? Hello. Say hello. Say, hello. say bend hey. in. Say, say hello. That's Rory. He brought me my water. I was thirsty. We had pizza for dinner, and pizza makes me thirsty. There are only seven people in here. There is nobody in here tonight. See, I'm I'm early. I'm really early. Usually, I get in here at 9:30. But there's one thing that I uh, see. There's somebody from Yorkshire in here right now. All right. Here's one of the problems with uh, oh, have him practice it. Roy's watching TV. He's in there watching SpongeBob. He don't want he, he don't get to watch SpongeBob very often back home. So he's watching SpongeBob with uh, my little my my little my three year old and my and my eight year old. So they're watching TV. But um, but no, that I'm here early tonight because a lot of my people that watch my channel from over the the big pond. What do they call it? The big pond over there in England, Britain. Germany, Italy, all over there. They don't ever, they can't ever catch my show because I'm on so late at night. It's like three in the morning over there when I'm live here. And so 
uh, I tried to get on as early as I could for people that normally don't get to watch a show. So that's why I'm here. But howdy from Arkansas. Howdy. So John's from California. You poor poor guy out there living out there in California with all them Californians. That's the land of fruits and nuts, right? Freaks and nuts. Fruits and nuts. Fruits and nuts. Freaks too. <laughs> Freaks and fruits and nuts. Out there in California. A lot of people moving away from California. I've gotten a lot of customers from California locally in Lynchburg. They're real nice people. Yeah. Part, yeah. I like Pat Californians. I ain't got no problem with Californians. Mm -hmm. Held quite a few moving to the neighborhood. Yeah. Hey, Jason, I have found your videos informational. Good. I do pest control for friends and family since I am not licensed, and I wanted to say I use Seismic CS and Teco Pro for general pest control. Yeah, a lot of people use those. I've been using Demon since I was a kid. Uh, Demon is one of the ones that, that I've been using for over 30 years, and I still use it. Um, the reason I use Demon, it's a synthetic pyrethroid. It's highly repellent to most every single bug you could imagine. Um, it's very repellent. It's got a very broad label. It's got lots of insects on the label, so it covers lots of bugs. And I only use it for outside. I don't really use it inside, but it does a really good job on like flies and all kinds of things that try to get in. Are you able to call? I can't do call-ins tonight. I don't have any way to do that tonight. I am sorry. <clears throat> Okay, so, hold on, this is going too fast for me. Let me see. I found your videos. Okay, uh, I'm from SF. You say I don't have to treat with Crossfire. I have been doing this for six months. Why do you think I shouldn't treat with Crossfire if they come every 14 days? Okay, so the problem is, all right, you say they, that the bugs populate in seven to ten days. But the problem is, is that if the bugs, the bugs don't technically populate, they hatch. They hatch within seven to ten days. If you do not have eggs, you don't, you don't have bugs. Um, but if you're continuing to see, do you live in an apartment? It's possibility if you live in an apartment, they're coming from somebody living nearby. If you've been dealing with bed bugs for six months, that's a long time to be dealing with bed bugs, no matter where you're from. Um, because the bed bugs should all be dead by now. It should not be taking them half of a year to get rid of your bed bug problem. My daughter was the one that thanked you via video for helping us with their bed bugs. I and I watched that again the other day. She's sweetheart. Um, I had Orkin come out and treat for fleas last Friday. I still feel the bites every other night and especially in fact Jennifer Johnson uh, your daughter is the first person that's ever sent me a video thank you ever I've had people send me postcards in my post office box I've had people tell me I've had thons, thousands of people tell me thank you on the internet you know people send me messages just to send me one just to say thank you I really appreciate that but that's the only person that's ever sent me a three-minute long video telling me that they were able to have their family over for Christmas because they killed their bed bugs. That was real sweet of her. You tell her I did. It almost made me cry. Almost, just almost, almost, just because I wasn't crying. I just was slicing some onions. But uh, maybe in the bed when I watched it, because that's what I do in the bed is cut onions. Well, I cut something in the bed. But I ain't gonna talk about what I cut in the bed because my wife, she's, <laughs> she'll chime in and tell you about how horrible it is. I had. A company come out and treat for fleas last Friday. I still feel the bites every other every night. Okay, so with um, with fleas, if you're getting fleas, fleas take approximately 21 days to go through their entire cycle, and you can have fleas bite up to three weeks after the treatment, but after then they should all be dead. And that's what I tell all my customers. And I hardly ever have to go back on a flea treatment when I you got to explain to people the life cycle of a flea. So, we want to see it. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What do you want to see? You want to see the video? Oh, no. I, I, she said I could, she said that I could, uh, that I could share the video, but I don't want to share the video because I'm, I'm, don't want to. I just don't want to. 
I think that's a personal thing. And even though they said I could, I'd rather just keep it for myself. So I don't usually share that kind of stuff. Maybe one day I'll make a video. I've, I've got all kinds of like, <clears throat> when people go in and leave me messages on my videos, they use my comments because I read all the comments. Like, I could pull my comments up right now on my other phone. You have comments, you have cards, people have handwritten you. Yeah, I know. That's what I said. I said postcards. I yeah. said postcards in my post office box. I got letters. People send me letters and say stuff, real nice things, and say, you know, I was able to get rid of my bugs and you helped me and you saved me thousands of dollars and I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you guys. It, it don't. I, I like helping people. I really do like helping people. I get a lot of flack on here for things I say, and they're like, you just say these things because you don't want people to know how to do it right, or you don't want people to be able to get rid of their bugs, especially on like, I've got videos on essential oils, and I have videos on diatomaceous earth, and why you shouldn't use them. And they're cheap. They're cheap, you know, alternatives to pesticides. And the reason that I tell people not to use them is because people don't understand the dangers that come with using these things with um, DE, is not good to breathe. Um, essential oils uh, can actually cause SIDS. They have been known to cause SIDS in babies. They've killed cats. Um, and they're, they're dangerous. They're not, they're, and, and I, they're, I've never ever used a single pesticide ever and killed someone's cat, ever, never. Never killed somebody's child. I've never done it. But there have been cases where people have gone in and used essential oils and their babies have died, which is tragic. It's horrible. and and. I've made these videos and I explain to people this is why this is a dangerous thing and you're, you're playing with a really dangerous thing here. And they're like, oh, you just don't want people to, your raid is taking all your business away. And I'm like, not really, because, you know, I mean, I don't know one single person that's in my chat right now from Virginia. If anybody in here is from Virginia, that would be great. Just let me know if you're from Virginia. But I can only practice pest control in Virginia. It's like a doctor. You know, when you're licensed in the state of Virginia, that's where you're able to practice. Now, if I had a license in North Carolina, I could practice in North Carolina or even Florida, where I'm at right now. I could practice it, but I can't because I'm not licensed in Florida. I can't do pest control in Florida. I put YouTube videos up because I'm explaining to people and trying to be instructional and explain to people how to get rid of their bugs on their own and be safe doing it because here's the problem. So... I was contacted by somebody the other day from Connecticut, and there's a video on my channel about it. But somebody contacted me from Connecticut. You can no longer purchase Crossfire in the state of Connecticut. You can also not purchase Crossfire in Maryland. You can't cr purchase Crossfire in New York. There are several states across the Union that you cannot purchase Crossfire. The reason you can't purchase Crossfire is because it is a neonicotinoid and the states are cracking down on neonicotinoids because people are not using them properly. They are poisoning honeybees. Honeybees are going, they're, they're dying out and uh, it's upsetting a lot of people. So what they're doing is they're turning it into a restricted use pesticide, which means the only people that can buy it is me, which is going to make your prices go up because I don't, I'm not going to go up on my prices unless they go up on the chemical. That's the only thing that drives my prices up. But other companies will. Other companies will take that as a, uh, as a motive to actually raise the rates on a chemical application that you have to buy because it's the only thing that works. You know, And so it really puts you over a barrel. It causes more people to have more problems because they don't have the ability to get the things they need to take care of the problems they've got. And so it's very important that when I tell people, follow the label, the label is the law, because if you don't follow the label, they are going to take the pesticide away from you. They are already doing it right now. They are doing it across the entire United States. They've already done it overseas. They don't let people buy neonicotinoids over in, in England. They don't let people do it in Canada because they're worried that people aren't going to apply the pesticide properly. So what you need to do is when you buy a pesticide, read the label, do it right, follow the directions, and don't misapply the pesticide because it causes problems that you're unaware of. And that's my rant for the day. And so let me see if I can get back to people's questions. <laughs> um, oh, let's see. Is there anything I can do after the company came out, or should I stay calm? I would stay calm for now and give it a couple more weeks and see what happens with the fleas. Um, John How Torres long says, do what? How long have they had the fleas? About a week. They, they were treated like last week. Oh, so no. it hasn't been that long. Oh, no, they have 
Jason, okay. what's your thoughts on gopher scram? I'm not sure. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. What's gopher scram? I don't know what this is. Is that like, is that like spam? Made out of gophers? They probably eat stuff like that from where my people... My people's from Galax up in the mountains of Virginia. They probably eat that. That's probably something nasty. Is that like spam? Spam nasty. My wife, like, what is that stuff called? It's like spam? Oh, scrapple. Scrapple? Nasty. It's so nasty. Oh, no. People eat nasty things. People really eat nasty things. Uh, get on TikTok. Watch five, I, you know I'm on TikTok. TikTok.com slash uh, at GreenAcresPC. Go watch me on TikTok. But there is... Did you just break something? No, you didn't break nothing. All right. Anyway, people eat nasty stuff. That's my, uh, but it's my idea of nasty. You know, they probably think, oh, it's so good. This 600-year-old egg makes me want to vomit in my mouth. It's disgusting. But anyway, um, Jason, what's your thought? I say, so if you could only have one pesticide you could use for the rest of your pest control career, I'd the problem is the government would take that one pesticide and outlaw it, and then I won't be able to use any pesticide. But if I had to pick one, I'd probably pick Alpine WSG just because it's versatile. It could be used on lots of things. The problem with pesticide and pest control is that pest control is not just about one pesticide. It's about many different pesticides. So with cockroaches, for example, you may need four or five different chemicals to be able to get rid of a cockroach infestation. Um, and this is chemicals that are in baits. This is baits, uh, dusts, uh, you know, rotating out your pesticides on rotation. It may take three or four different ones on rotation to get rid of things like cockroaches. Um, bed bugs, I use just crossfire. You know, that's what I use for bed bugs. But I've gone in and done a crossfire job and put dust in the wall and stuff like that too. I've done that. Um, and so I'm not using just one different, just one thing. And so it's, that's, a very, that's a very hard question to give a specific answer for because, honestly, most bug problems do take more than one pesticide to get rid of. Uh, when I do general pest control, I put granules in the yard and stuff to try to uh, slow the progression of bugs towards the house you know, because bugs live in the yard. And so you know, once you've eliminated an infestation indoors, it's really just about keeping things from not, like with ants and spiders and crickets and silverfish and you know, the bugs that come in from outside. If you do a really good job outside around the eaves, overhangs, doors, windows, um, and that takes multiple chemicals to do that. Not just one spray is gonna work. You need to spray, you need to spread granules over the yard. You might even need to dust around a window that's that's got you know wood rot, which you know is going to attract carpenter ants. You know things like that, and you try to preemptively combat the issue before it becomes a problem. And then your customers never have a problem. You never have callbacks. You don't have to worry about driving out there and you know messing up your whole day to do one job that you should have done right in the first place. So, if I answered your question, I know it's a cheap answer. I can't just give you one, but if I had to pick one, most bugs die from alpine. It's really effective but alpine is also a neonicotinoid that's another one of the ones that they're trying to outlaw um, it's the family of pesticides so the problem is is that there in that video i did it's like a minute long you can go find it but um it's one of my shorts it's really easy to find actually um but in connecticut they've outlawed all neonics uh they've made them restricted use pesticides because of the destruction of the honeybee the problem is, is that Crossfire is used only indoors. It doesn't even have honeybees on the label. It doesn't have the war warning, this is deadly toxic to bees, because they assume that you're not going to use it inside. I mean, outside. You're not going to use it outside around bees because it's for bed bugs. It's only to be used inside. Welcome to the Sunshine State. Burr. What? Jesse Hudson. What is the degree outside right now? Um, let me see. Let me see. What does my watch say? What does it say? Hey, stop it. What is it? It is 64 degrees. It is 64 degrees. The high was 77 today. And you act like that's cold? When I left Virginia, it was 13. It was 13 degrees. And that's cold for Virginia. And that's cold. Yeah, that's cold for Virginia. You usually don't get that cold. But it was cold. You just... It, Floridians, <laughs> crazy Floridians think it's cold. It's nice. I got short sleeves. Short sleeves. Sitting, Sitting nice. outside. Outside. Let's show you. I'm outside. Did it show up? Yeah, it did. 
it's pretty cool. It's a nice house. I'll be gone from here in a couple of days, though. My vacation's almost over, and then I gotta go back home, and I gotta work. For gotta whole new year. work, work. All right, what do you use to treat mites, please? Skin mites. If you've got mites living on your skin, you have to go to a doctor. It's the only thing you can do. Is you have to go to a doctor. Um. In my services, I mostly do one treatment, and I don't get callbacks. I always recommend a quarterly service because it'll save you money per year. The problem with the quarterly service, and the reason I don't, I don't recommend quarterly. I recommend monthly. I recommend monthly services um, because pesticides, most all pesticides, work best on a 30-day residual, meaning you reapply once every 30 days. If you're reapplying once every 90 days, you're running into a lot more problems with the house that you normally wouldn't have if you had regular monthly service. Most of my customers are monthly. I only have a handful of customers that are quarterly or bi-monthly for that matter. Um, what exactly happens after this company sprayed for fleas? I was in a hurry and didn't get info. Okay, so it depends on the label because every pesticide is different. But Alpine WSG, the label says you spray the entire floor, you broadcast over the whole floor, you treat the couch, um, you pick up the cushions and treat down inside the couch. Uh, that's basically what you do. It doesn't take a lot of time because you're just spraying the whole floor. It's usually maybe 20 minutes tops to be in and out of a house for a flea treatment. Um, that's what I do. I don't, and I use Nygard as a IGR in the, uh, in the pesticide. Um, if I do, most time I don't, most time it's just Alpine and it takes three weeks for the fleas to die. I don't know what they used. So unless I had the label and knew, you know, what they were actually using in your house, I couldn't tell you what they did for fleas because the label will be very specific on what you can and cannot do and how you can and cannot treat fleas. Uh, Demon, Demon Max used to have an indoor label. You used to be able to use it indoors. It was a, it was very effective to get rid of fleas, mixed it with, uh, you took, uh, 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 demise, you mixed an ounce, ounce, I think it was an ounce or two of demise. I can't remember. Demise is something I used all the time. Can't find it anymore. But um, Demon Max, demise, and you spray the whole floor, you wouldn't have to go back for fleas. Um, but now you can't use Demon inside for fleas anymore. Use it outside, but you can't use it inside. So. Jennifer Lego, I think I will shell out the money to pay someone to treat the <laughs> treat gutters. Um, do you use granulars when it's raining? No, I don't use granulars when it's raining because um, they're just going to run off. It, now, you could use them if you know the forecast is calling for rain. You can use them before it rains and it works. But uh, you typically want to water the granules after you use them. A fipronil, let's see, metacloprid. Uh, Midiclopper is actually really good. They make granules out of Midiclopper. It's amazing. But they don't sell big bags of it anymore. They used to, but they don't anymore. Or Alpine is a perimeter treatment versus Bifenthrin, Demon, etc. The reason I... So, so what I do is I do a, uh, either a Bifenthrin or Cypermethrin exterior. And then I use uh, uh, like a synthetic pyrethroid basically around the outside. Uh, which of course is mostly what's in granules or Midiclopper granules. And then I use... Uh, Alpine WSG indoors. Uh, it's a little expensive. Um, a lot of people don't even use Alpine in my profession unless they have a specific problem that demands them use Alpine, but I just use it. General pest control, that's what I use indoors all the time. It's very effective and I don't have to worry about, you know, people having problems with a lot of weird things like ants and stuff that crop up every now and then. They just die from Alpine. And so I like to use a non -repellent, a repellent outside, non repellent inside. So if there are bugs in the house, you don't drive them crazy. If you go and use a repellent indoors, it drives the bugs out. You know, in fact, when I first started doing this, I was a kid, 17, 18 years old, when I had my own route, I would tell people, I'd say, now after today, don't be alarmed if you see bugs come out in your house you didn't know you had because this chemical is going to make the bugs act crazy and they're going to crawl out to die because they're going to try to get away from it. That's how a repellent works. When you spray a repellent down behind the baseboards and the bugs are behind the baseboards, it's going to chase the bugs out from behind the baseboards. But when you use Alpine, the customer really doesn't see that. They don't see a lot of the bugs running out and doing crazy things 
like they would with something like a synthetic pyrethroid or something like that because you're not actually using something the bugs recognize. It's just, it's just a, they don't know it's even there. So, let's see. Anything you can recommend for me? I'm the host for these fleas. It's driving me crazy. Um, I don't know, honestly. Where do you live? I thought you lived overseas somewhere out in the... Uh, and I'm not really sure what they sell over there. Do you just not treat exterior when it's raining? Oh, no. There's a lot of places you can treat the exterior when it's raining. You know, I mean, if it's a downpour, I don't do it. But there are areas like right here. So at this house... There's a covered porch. I'm, I'm looking at it right now. It's like a covered patio. There's no chance the rain is going to fall underneath this house. You can treat there. Around the eaves and stuff, around the overhangs, and for spiders and things like that. The overhang sticks out around this house a good, what, three, from three to four feet out. It doesn't get rain up next to the house. It's not going to be wet there. Now, I'm not going to do a lot of the things that I would normally do for the exterior like around the base of the house where it's getting wet but around the windows around the eaves and places that are not getting wet that aren't washing the chemical away because the problem is the pesticide has to be allowed to dry before it gets wet if the pesticide it if it gets wet uh while it's i mean if you spray it and then the rainwater touches it it's going to dilute it it's not going to be effective so you have to spray the spots that aren't getting wet as long as everything's not getting soaking wet it's going to last it's going to be just fine. Um, hey, Jason, I just purchased a Gopher X machine. Pretty expensive. Have you ever used one? We don't have gophers. We don't really have problems with gophers. Woodchucks. Wood, wood, woodchucks. Uh, yeah. Groundhogs. Yeah, but not really. We don't really have problems with gophers. I've never really had to deal with them. I'm sure if, I mean, maybe one day. Maybe. But not yet. I'm in Georgia. Where is Georgia? Isn't that Georgia over there in the Middle East? Isn't that a country over there? Greece or somewhere? Greece or Italy, somewhere down there? I'm not Turkey? I'm not really sure where Georgia is. I know it's Turkey? over that way. Turkey? Like over near Turkey? Turkey always makes me hungry. Um, well, I say that one. It's not that it was close to like the Ukraine or something. Ukraine? I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, familiar. I think it is over near Ukraine. Um, I have no idea. Um, I'd have to look into it, honestly. Uh, Matty Ice, only bugs in the house are spiders and house centipedes, especially in the basement. Let them stay or alpine WSG and risk seeing what they've been eating. Um, it's Georgia in the States. But you said Georgia time 5 o'clock. Come on now. It's 3, three what? 8 o'clock, isn't it? Georgia don't have it one time zone. I thought you said Georgia was 5 o'clock. Or are you, you're, you're, oh, wait, 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 wait. I see what you're doing. You're doing the five military. Like the, plus five Greenwich. Isn't that what it's called? Isn't that what we live in? Plus five Greenwich. Mm -hmm. Your arm is in my camera. You did that. Everybody saw your elbow. <laughs> well, if you're, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I misunderstood. So if you have a problem with fleas and you're in Georgia, then I recommend Alpine WSG. That's what I use. I've got a video on fleas even. If I can find it, I will copy it. I will paste it to you real quick. Let me see. Let me see, 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 see here. Because this, this, now this is something that is easier. Because I can go to my channel, which is here. There's my channel. And you should subscribe to me and like me and be friendly with me and say, Hey, Jason, you're a pretty cool guy. They don't have to think I'm cool or nothing. I'm really not cool. I'm really a nerd. I'm really a horrible nerd. I mean, I'm wearing a Deadpool shirt. I've got a Pokemon sticker on the back of my phone. In fact, I bought the new Pokemon game. It comes out midnight tonight. Going to play with the kids. I'm a, ner I'm a nerd. I'm a nerd. I am not cool. But anyway, let me see if I can find my flea chemical video. Flea. Flea. Fleas. Green Acres. Let's search that. There it is. See, how to get, is that going to work? How to get rid of fleas? It's horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Share, copy link, and then I can come over here on this phone and I can just paste it right there. There you go. That work? 
Let's see. I was saying if it fleas come out more after five, do I need Alpine? Uh, I modded my kid's arcade to play lots of different classics from the 90s. Oh, yeah, I love the 90s. I play lots of games. I, I hooked up, so before I left the house for vacation, I have an old Super Nintendo and an old regular Nintendo, and I took and hooked them up to my big screen TV and was playing, uh, what's the game? I played some Earthbound. I played some Super Mario. I, play, I don't know what happened to my Super Mario RPG. I got that somewhere. But I played Tetris, played Dr. Mario. My youngest, my, my daughter loves Dr. Mario. She could play Dr. Mario and Tetris all night long. She loves those games. So I play those with them all the time. Hey, Jason, you're a cool guy. And nerds are cool. <laughs> don't let anyone tell you otherwise. <laughs> I want, hey, Jennifer, I want to make you a mod. If you let me make you a mod, you let me know. I just was asking, since you're here, I want to ask you, am I knocking stuff all over the place? I think I am. I'm not cramping. My knees are cramping up sitting like this. But I want to make Jennifer Lego a mod because I trust her. I think she'd do good, and she'd keep the riffraff out of here. Jason, does bed bugs and fleas fight with each other? I, no, I don't think so. I guess listening to you, it's good you enjoy your job, be knowledgeable, Genuinely care. I'm a. I love different timbers. <laughs> Had an Airwolf game on NES. I used to love. I tell you what, my mom, my mother, she's been dead now. Uh, eight. No, stop it. Stupid thing. Uh my mom's been. Well, let's see. My mom died. Let's see. Emma. Emma will be nine. Yeah, it's been eight years because she'll be nine in March. And uh, when when. When, when, uh, there's a thing fishing out there again. Uh, she used to play Legend of Zelda, the original Legend of Zelda, the gold cartridge for the NES. I put that thing in the other day, and it still got her save file on there from like the 80s. Because that game came out in like 86, I think, 87. And it still got her original save file from back in the 80s. Let's see. Cool. There you go, Jennifer. Now you're a mod. I raised my, I, I, I waved my magic wand and made you a mod. Now don't just ban people, because sometimes I like, I like to talk to people, even if they don't share my opinion. I don't care. But, um, because I like that. I don't mind that. I don't mind different opinions. That's how you grow, is having different opinions. But if you see them spammers, you block them all you want. I hate spammers. I have a rotted maple tree 20 feet from the house that has fallen branches, come down, have littered carpenter ants. Yeah, you need to treat that. Kill those carpenter ants. Because, uh, yeah, we'll have to have a game night one time. I, I've got my Twitch. For some reason, when I'm at home, I cannot stream Twitch and YouTube at the same time. It gives me hell of time. But I've got a Twitch stream, and I was thinking I might stream over there on Twitch maybe one odd night that I don't do my normal live streams with YouTube. Maybe play a game or something and ask people, answer people's questions. That'd be fun. My wife, she plays Rust because she's crazy mean. <laughs> so, For anyone that knows what Rust is, you go look it up. My wife's mean. She plays Rust because she's mean. She she practicing. She practicing for the future so something if I upset her or something. Do you remember the Atari Lynx? I do. I had an Atari Lynx. That thing was amazing. I didn't have one, but I had a friend to have one and I used to play uh the uh, the surfing game on there all the time. I love that surfing game. That was fun. Um let's see. Spray the base of the tree, yard treatment, perimeter treatment, spray the base of the tree. Yeah, you gotta do that. Um and do it every month. Once a month, you'll kill the ants. Because the ants got to come down the tree to get to whatever they need. So people talk about games now. People talk about video games. We moved into a twin house that had bed bugs. Um, did you ever like NBA? Oh, I don't like NBA Jam. Rust is awesome. All I can play now is Seven Days to Die. Uh, let's see. DJ Lehman says, oh, Will bombing and spraying kill bugs in an uncluttered home? Bombing doesn't kill bugs. Bombing does not kill bugs. Bombing is crap. Don't bomb your house. You're just going to get pesticides on everything you own, and it's nasty. 
don't do that. Um, treating, spraying, using something like Alpine WSG, uh, something non-repellent that bugs don't know is there is going to be more effective than treating with a bomb. A bug bomb's gross. Don't, don't do use a bug bomb. Jason, in the springtime in North Carolina, I got wasps going into every hole in the house. What can I do? Treat those holes and kill those wasps. What, more than likely what's happening in, is the wasps are either coming out from hibernation or they're going in to try to find a place to nest. More than likely they're coming out of your house from hibernation because in the spring they do that. When it first starts to get warm, the, wasp, the wasps go in in the fall and they will actually winter in the wall and in your roof and when you, uh, in the spring, when it starts to warm up again, they come out of hibernation, they'll come in and out of those holes. Because at nighttime, I mean, North Carolina is basically the same as Virginia as far as climate, maybe two or three degrees different. But what happens is, well, is it'll be cold at night, but it'll be warm during the day. And so the bees will actually, or the wasps will actually go in during the night and they'll come out during the day and they'll be making those little paper umbrella wasp nests all over your house and maybe underneath a table, maybe underneath your grill. So when you open up your grill in the summertime, you get stung half a death. But uh, yeah, so, so typically what I tell people is you can dust those holes or you can spray those holes and kill those bees that go in and out of there because that's how they're getting in and out of the house. Excuse me, I've got indigestion. I had pizza and I'm, I'm old and I can't eat pizza no more. It makes my heart burn, gives my heart burn. People, I wonder, I, you ever wonder what people think when they watch these things back? It's like, these live streams, I'm just running my mouth, talking about pizza and video games. It's like, is this guy going to talk about bugs, or is he going to talk about Nintendo? You know? But I talk about all kinds of stuff on my live streams. We, we're here, we're chatting, we're buddies. Joshua Cook, we are asking our neighbors. Okay, so wait a minute. What if the bomb is a 500-pound GPU? <laughs> Oh, I hope that's a joke. We are asking our neighbors to use the product too. Do you think using Crossfire on our side, uh, it'll kill your bugs. It might kill theirs too. It just depends. If the bed bugs go back, it, all right. So the problem with apartments <coughs> is the apartment. So, so you'll have bed bugs living in yours and they'll crawl through the Crossfire or they'll be living in theirs and they won't be. But if they're living in their apartment and they're coming into your apartment and then they're going back, they're traveling through the residue and they're taking it back. Uh, crossfire is transferable. So if the bed bug crawls through it and then they go and communicate with other bed bugs, it spreads it from bed bug to bed bug. So technically you could kill the other bed bugs, but theoretically, theoretically you could. But uh, honestly, you probably can't. You probably won't. So. Let's see, we, what would you recommend spraying base of the tree? Alpine works. Um, Taurus, Taurus will work. Taurus is for carpenter ants. Taurus actually works really good on carpenter ants. I recommend that, I recommend that. it's really good. Uh, what, why is everybody's text all of a sudden red? How'd I do that? Um, should I vacuum six days after the exterminator came out for fleas? Yes, you should vacuum every day. You should vac vacuum every single day after the exterminator has sprayed for fleas because the vacuum will aggravate the, the cocoon. So a flea goes through metamorphosis. So what happens is a flea hatches out of an egg, bites you, goes into a cocoon like a caterpillar, and then it waits, it gestates for two, sometimes three weeks, which is why I say 21 days, because it tan can take up to 21 days from the day it goes into cocoon. Most of the time it's like two weeks. Um, and then it lays dormant until you walk by. So the vibration of you walking by is enough to aggravate that flea to make it hatch out of its cocoon and jump on you. And so you want to vacuum, so the vacuum will aggravate the cocoon. It's not going to hurt the chemical but it will aggravate the cocoon and make the flea jump out. And the, the idea is that the flea will jump towards the vacuum and not on you, fall on the floor and die. And so that's what you need to do because the, 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 res the residue from the pesticide is in the floor. So when the flea falls in the floor, it's now it's in the chemical residue, it will die. So, so vacuum every day after you treat for fleas, always. 
Hope I talked to them and left a jug and a sprayer on their porch. I'm worried that the cold weather will hurt my crossfire. It can. The cold can hurt crossfire. It can hurt lots of pesticides. But uh, warm, hot, hot water, mixing with real hot water can damage your pesticide too. So, I'm wondering if you're catching those because I see them. See now, see, that's the thing is they come up on my channel. See that? See that? I'm going to stop having to share my text because when I'm on my, on my, I see this, see people? Look at this. Oh, it won't let me scroll. Anyway, it's this little people right there. But she's blocking them. She's fast on the clicker, I tell you. <laughs> she's fast on the clicker. Jennifer's fast. See, I knew if I made her a mod, she'd get, she ain't here every time I'm live streaming, but when she is, she'll crack a whip. <laughs> so, it's fine to talk about everything. Anyone who watched a live is okay with multi-subject. I love how you share so much information. I like to talk a lot. I talk about everything. I got my baby, uh, which I can't share the picture of the baby because I'm on my iPad. I can't really share it. I don't really know how to use Streamlabs through my iPad. It's nice to have it because it does give me an option to where I can stream when I'm out of town. But, um, yeah. Oh, I'm going to have to get off here, though. I'm tired. I have to use bathroom. I want to swim before before I have to go to bed. So I, I, I got old, so I turned 40 back in last month, and now I'm old, and I'm geriatric, and i got to go to bed. Look at that. Look at that hair, man. I just made it stand straight up. That's crazy. I need a haircut. Let's see. I know bed bugs can survive zero degrees for a while, but I'm hoping if they were in my car, negative 11 for several hours overnight, the other day will be enough. Hopefully. Uh, we sprayed a month ago, and I feel like Crossfire is working. We have found some dead bed bugs. How long do you think it'll take to get rid of them? After spraying for the initial treatment of Crossfire, it usually takes uh, three to five weeks for all of the bed bugs to die. Um, anything after the three to five weeks, uh, you want to spray again. If you're still seeing bed bugs after the three, after five weeks, honestly, if you still see bed bugs after the fifth week, then you want to spray again. Petbridge Farm donated five dollars, and you didn't have to do that. But you do make really good, like, food. Pepperidge Farm does. Really, really good. Should I vacuum inside the encasement when I remove it? I throw it away. But you take your, take your mattress encasement, ball it up, take it outside, and throw it in the garbage. Um, did you see that? Oh, Julie, you saw that video I did this week, didn't you? I had a video... I had a video that, <laughs> that I had no idea was going to blow up like it did. But I put a video up Tuesday about some of the worst bed bug jobs. All right, I had over 200 videos and images of bed bugs. Over 200 that I edited down. Here I am on vacation sitting in there at the desk editing down this video of some of the worst, absolute worst bed bug jobs I've ever been on. And it took so much, it was such a long video that I actually had to divide it into two. So I did part one Tuesday and part two comes out next Tuesday because I don't have time to really edit a lot of videos while I'm out of town. Um, so I went ahead and did a part one and a part two. So, uh, cause I have a full day, I'm, I mean, as soon as I get back, oh, man, I gotta drive back home Saturday morning, we're going to stop halfway in Savannah, and then we're leaving from Savannah Sunday, driving home. Monday, I have to go and do my makeup work because we had an ice storm in Virginia right before I had to leave. So I have to do that Monday, a full day of work, plus everything that's come in while I was out of town, plus Tuesday starts the next month, and I just don't have time to make videos. So I've got two videos going up. My second one is going to be... The second part to and there's some horrible ones and i cannot remember if part one had the picture of the bed bug in walmart because i was in walmart in walmart and there was a bed bug in walmart i took a picture of it and i've got that in one of those videos so anyway if you're interested in seeing some pictures of bed bugs in walmart <laughs> go take a look but y'all have a real great night i really appreciate it 
And I'm going to go ahead and get off here. I've been on for an hour. Don't forget, like a stream, thumb me up, and follow me, and hit notification bell, and I'll see you next week. Thanks a lot.